Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here, and I wanted to bring you my review of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. My oldest son, who is 12 years old, had been begging me to see this, and I had an interest in it. Um, just quick backstory with End of the Spider-Verse. That's one that I had almost zero expectations for. Saw that when it came out on streaming and was very pleasantly surprised. I knew that it had received good reviews, but for whatever reason, generally speaking, I don't love animated movies. Like, there's just something about them frequently that I don't love. Even though, for example, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Like, it's really hard for me to get into Clone Wars, uh, Rebels, all that kind of stuff. So, I went into Into the Spider Verse not really expecting a whole lot, but I loved it. It's a fantastic thing. It was super original. I remember thinking, you know, this isn't the best movie I've ever seen or anything like that, but it felt fresh. The art style felt like it matched the energy of the story and the characters, and I just loved everything about it. So, Going into this one, I actually was kind of excited, which is rare for me frequently with an animated movie, but I took my kids to see it tonight, and we all really had a blast. Hey, as always, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Please also be sure to subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot, and as always, I very much appreciate your viewership. So to me, this is Into the Spider-Verse, but bigger and maybe better. I don't know if I would say definitely better. I would give it the same kind of overall rating, which again is that I just really had a great time with it. And I think that it's just kind of an ingenious and heady way to put together a story. So this very much builds on the first story. A good bit of time has passed. Um, you can tell that Miles Morales as a character has grown up uh, physically, all that kind of stuff, right? He's in his sort of uh, mid-teenage years. I think they say he's something like 15 in the movie, something like that. And so he's dealing with all the things that teenagers of that age deal with, relationships, um, trying to navigate school life, all that kind of stuff. But the story, again, finds just a really clever, ingenious way to wrap in everything that we know and love about Spider-Man and all of its different Marvel sort of entities. And I don't want to get into spoilers uh, too heavily here, and I think that it's kind of tough to do that without talking about all the things that I do really enjoy about the movie. But there are some sequences here where you've got all kinds of variety of spider people interacting with one another, and it's just really great action. It's really funny. Um, the interdimensionality of this, sort of the physics behind it, all of that kind of stuff... I appreciate that as someone who is a super nerd and loves sort of the, the speculation and theory that goes along with things like parallel universes, alternate universes, all of that. That's all here. The same kind of thing that you loved about End of the Spider-Verse is here again in this film. And it's all handled really well. And again, that chaotic art form, right? Kind of the cel-shaded approach that you get. Um, and I don't even know if that's really the right word, but the art form is sort of distinct to the first movie is here again. And I think in a lot of ways, it's even kind of louder and more um, sort of out of control. But again, it matches the energy of the scenes. You care about these characters. You care about the story. You care about what's happening here in ways that I would say very clearly trumps a lot of other Marvel movies, right? I think a lot of times people kind of push this aside, potentially because it is animated, that sort of thing. But no, it should definitely get a fair shake. And I think, you know, given the critical response that it's received and probably the way it's tracking in the box office, it, you know, it, it's just going to continue to succeed and do well. Now, a lot of people have noted that they didn't love the fact that it ends as kind of a cliffhanger type of movie. And that's very much the case. It ends with a to be continued uh, title card or screen that you see in front of you. Um, even though the movie itself is two hours and 20 minutes, a lot of stuff happens. But it sets itself up for a really great finale beyond the Spider-Verse, which I think is coming next year, 2024. So I really have no complaints about this. The only complaint I have actually has to do with my local theater where I saw it. For whatever reason, the sound mix was a little bit off. For some reason, they had the dialogue turned down just a little too low. So there were some really loud action moments, and you could tell that the characters were saying things that we were supposed to hear as an audience but because of the way the sound mix had been delivered in that theater, it wasn't always perfect. And there were a couple of times where I looked at my oldest son and I'm like, are you hearing what's going on? And, you know, even after the fact, he's like, yeah, there were a couple of moments there where I couldn't hear what was being said. So that's just like a local theater thing. I don't think that was meant to be the case in the way that it played out in the film. I don't think anyway. If somebody has a different experience or even a similar experience, I guess, if you had that same experience, let me know in the comments below. But Again, just really a great movie-going experience. I would say, though, that my nine-year-old who saw it, I think he did have a little bit of a, a hard time kind of keeping up with the plot, mostly because he did not see Into the Spider-Verse, the first one. My oldest one had seen that, but at the last second, my youngest was like, I want to go with you guys. I want to see this movie. And so he came with us. Um, he really enjoyed it, I think, because of all the different versions of Spider-People that were there. Not so much for the plot, but he loved the art style. He loved the action, all of that kind of stuff. So... That's one question some people have, I think, is, you know, should I take a younger kid to see it? And there's definitely nothing here content-wise that's concerning. It's just, it's a fairly complex plot, and if you haven't seen the first movie, it can be a little bit tough to keep up with, potentially. So, all that aside, I loved it. It's one that I'm probably going to pick up on 4K Blu-ray when it releases. I can't wait for the conclusion to this. I assume it's going to be a trilogy that just sort of ends, but 
Music was great. Story was great. Really no complaints at all from me. Um, I was completely invested in it. But again, you know, when you go with kids, sometimes the struggle happens. There was literally 10 minutes left in the movie. My youngest son kept saying, Dad, I really have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so we ran, did it, came back, caught the final five minutes right as things were sort of closing out. But that's the, sort of the struggle you have as a parent sometimes. But anyway, if you've seen Across the Spider-Verse, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for watching.